Limited. And for more, we're joined by Stephanie Fabius from Wealthy. Stephanie, thanks so much for your time. Morning, Aaron. How are you? I'm doing very well today. Thank you. Um, talk to us about how COVID's impacted investment properties. Yeah, we've seen a lot of changes in the rental property market with COVID-19 impacting investors from their rents to tenants moving and looking for better value elsewhere. Um, property managers have been put under lots of stress. Um, but overall, we think it's it, it will be a positive impact on the investment market because investors are reviewing their portfolio and they're really getting their head around numbers where uh, traditionally maybe they've left that to their property managers or accountants. Is it a case of wait and see for a lot of property investors at the moment, do you think? Uh, for some, but it really depends on what market you're in and where your investment properties are. So we're finding that inner city investment properties are the ones that um, are, are tending to maintain their rents a little bit more. Uh, they've definitely taken a hit, but it's a really good time for investors to be reviewing their portfolio and assessing what rents they're getting um, and taking advantage of any opportunity to support their tenants, but also lengthen leases um, and, and cover themselves for the future. It's interesting we talk about length and leases. What about situations where tenants are looking to get out, you know, by the end of the year, but things are getting even tougher? Leases might be up in November or December. It's becoming a bit of a tricky issue because this was something that happened back in March or April where people were told, work it out amongst yourselves. I mean, many um, owners of, of investment properties are relying on that rental income to come forward. We know the banks are obviously about to run out of patience with people not paying their mortgages as well. It feels like there's a very tense conversation about to be held. Yeah, that's exactly right, Aaron, and that's what we're seeing as well. Because tenants are changing situations, they might be changing jobs, um, they might be going through their own em employment changes, but stability is definitely becoming very prominent and we're finding property managers need to focus on that a lot when searching for new tenants. Um, but there's also opportunities out there, like always, for, um, for some tenants to review where they're renting and maybe make a move and save some costs. Um, so everyone still needs somewhere to live. So what are we seeing in the market at the moment? And we talk about the market, but obviously in the property market, there are many markets, not to mention that you've got metro and regional and then every state is its own market at the moment. Where are the real hot spots? Because I can't imagine too much is happening in Melbourne right now. No, that's exactly right. Melbourne has taken the hardest hit of them all. Um, obviously, we're finding that financing is getting increasingly di difficult in Melbourne, particularly since stage three has progressed to stage four lockdowns. Valuations are getting tougher um, and the banks are much more conservative, understandably, uh, down in Victoria. But there's still great opportunities in the other Australian states, um, taking advantage of government incentives and grants, particularly in New South Wales, we're seeing investors uh, jump into the home builder grants in house and land packages where you can turn around a new investment in six to eight months. Um, so that's a great opportunity. But also the other hotspot or, or opportunity that, that I think has been overlooked by many is developer cash flow requirements. So because developers have huge pipeline obligations in their cash flow. Um, they've seen that their residual stock or newly completed stock, if there has been any settlement, uh, settlement fallovers, there's great opportunity there to move quickly. So talk to us how it's possible then with obviously wage and lifestyle sacrifices to try and maintain high city rents in this case, given that uh, city rents have been pretty extraordinarily high and growing over recent years all of a sudden students disappearing, um, overseas students. We're hearing about cities of Sydney and Melbourne with so many vacancies. It's happening right around the world as well uh, in big cities around the world. Talk to us about how investors can try and keep these um, investment portfolios of properties with high uh, rental income. Yeah, so buying, buying right is always the, the obvious thing, but for investors, they're already into a holding pattern. I think many investors are locking down the hatches and hanging on to their properties now. Um, and so they're in this, in this sticky situation. But one thing that investors can do is really nurture the relationship that they have with their tenants and their property managers. I've seen that with my own property portfolio. Um, when you have tenants in there, if you're understanding of their situation and you get on the front foot and you're happy to negotiate, I think opening that communication early um, and always trying to be fair and reasonable and find a middle ground, whether it be, look, we'll re reduce your rent uh, less, 
provided that you extend your lease or there's got to be some give and take you know everyone has been hit really hard in throughout this pandemic and i think understanding that is really important no matter what side of the fence you're on all right thank you so much for that appreciate it thanks aaron have